What's up, everyone, and welcome back to the Stocks with Mike and Tom show. We have some giant news to talk about today. We have a firm stock down over 20%. Inflation data is going crazy, and the market is all over the place. So stick with us today, guys. We have a lot of great plays for tomorrow, and we have some giant news to cover. But with that being said, Tom, let's get right into it. Yeah, Mike, like you said, the market was all over the place and early in the morning, it was looking pretty bad as the CPI data came out and it was actually worse than expected. We can see that the 10-year treasury yield ended up topping 2% early in the morning as the inflation data came out. And we can see that, the, that we ended up actually rising up to 7.5% higher than the Dow Jones estimate of 7.2%, which was being closely watched. And it's the highest reading since February of 1982. And you can see on the chart here how high it's actually getting. We're starting to get pretty uh, significantly up there, Mike, and it's not looking good. You know, even gas prices are going up and just overall the inflation is getting insane and the market did not like this data. And then we actually recovered back. But as the day went on, I feel like the market kind of caught up with itself. Yeah, Tom, inflation's kind of getting out of control and it doesn't look like it's too uh, transitory. So uh, we'll see. But <laughs> either way, the market is all over the place, Tom. Um, and we have like a firm stock going crazy. Like this stock was so crazy today. Like I, I couldn't even believe the news. So, so let's show the CNBC article. We can see the CNBC headline. A firm shares plummet 21% after accidentally tweeting financial results. So apparently the official Affirm Twitter account, uh, due to human error, gave out a lot of their earnings data and the market did not like that. Yeah, they did not like it at all. And you know what? The revenue actually came in pretty good. It came in at $361 million versus $328.8 million expected. And we can see their stock ended up tanking down to $50 before bouncing right back up. It was insane to see this stock fall down like this, Mike. And like you said, how do you accidentally tweet out your earnings before they're actually supposed to be scheduled? Like that's insane to me. I don't know how that happened or I'd, like they said, it's human error, but I don't know who did that or why, but it was insane to see. And their stock just plummeted. And, you know, like we said, Mike, there is pretty good uh, numbers here. You know, they they did come in at a net loss of 57 cents per share, which is bad, but the revenue is looking pretty good. So I would think it's decent, but their, their shares really tumbled down 21%. It was so volatile and it really stole the headlines today. Over like the past couple of weeks, Tom, we've seen some crazy events that are just hard to believe, but I feel like every week that goes by, the market just gets crazier and crazier. Like what's gonna happen next? Like you have Facebook pulled up now, that dropped like 25% last week. Netflix dumped before that, Peloton dumped before that. A firm's out here tweeting their earnings before it's supposed to be released, like what's next? <laughs> Yeah, maybe Elon will have to come out with something. You know, I know he's uh, he's always in the headlines for doing crazy stuff. So maybe he'll have to send out a crazy tweet or maybe announce he's selling 10% again or something crazy. <laughs> Who knows? But yeah, I mean, it's a crazy time, Mike. And the thing that's really crazy to me is that we had that 10-year treasury yield jump very significantly today. Like we said, the 10-year yield actually topped 2% and the TNX is up above $20 now. Like, it's just getting insane to see how this keeps rising. And obviously the market is not liking it at all. The SPY is straddling that 448 support here at the end of the day. So hopefully this holds up heading into Friday or else it could get pretty bloody. True that. So Tom, looking at the SPY, what are like the main levels you're watching? Yeah, the main levels are gonna be 448 for tomorrow. I know that we did extend past that at the end of the day, but 448 has been a pretty big level. Below that though, 446 is even bigger in my opinion. We've had multiple bounces right there. If we fall below 446, I could see this one selling off to 444 and then possibly beyond that. But hopefully we see 448 hold up heading into tomorrow morning, Mike. Like you said, today was all over the place. And if we do hold 448, it looks like 450 is going to be a big resistance. And then we had a lot of intraday resistance at 452 as well. 
Gotcha. All right. We'll definitely keep those on the radar. But like Tom, are are you seeing anything else in the markets? Like I know earnings have been wild lately. The spy's been all over the place. But you know, what are you seeing or thinking with the markets right now? I know the CPI data was uh, kind of whack, but what are you thinking? Yeah, I mean, it's just insane. And I'm just I'm hoping to see that some of these tech stocks end up holding up with uh, the talk of rates possibly rising and with the CPI data coming out. I know that uh, tech stocks have been hit particularly bad ever since Powell has been talking about possibly rising rates. And, you know, we can see that MU ended up performing pretty well today. But whenever we look at stocks like AMD, they ended up tanking off to the downside in a pretty major way. You know, these are some pretty big tech stocks being AMD, NVIDIA. Um, like we said, Facebook was even down slightly today and had that big drop the other day. And it's just sad to see all these tech stocks continuing to fall down. Hopefully Apple can even hold its ground. They were down 2.36% today as the SPY just kept selling off. And it's just not a good sign to keep seeing these big tech companies selling off with the, with the thought of rates possibly rising. That would make you think that maybe when they do ri raise them, it'll affect them even more in the short term. But hopefully we start to recover over the next six months or so. True that. So good stuff there. And I just want to shout out our member of the day really quickly. Huge shout out to Gutter Fighting. Thanks so much for being a great member of the Discord. And thanks so much for those comments on YouTube. Comments really help us grow our channel. And we greatly appreciate all the comments you guys leave us. So thank you so much to Gutter and everyone else who leaves comments down below. Um, and also, if you guys are new to the show, please consider subscribing. You know, we post brand new videos every single day and uh, we're always improving. So definitely consider subscribing. But Tom, let's get right into these momentum plays for tomorrow. And with the first one, we have Teladoc to the upside. Yeah, with Teladoc, go ahead and make them break out above $78 to the upside. And if they do end up falling down, make them fall below $72. They're in a bit of a good range right here. All right, with the next one, we have Microsoft, but to the downside. Yeah, unfortunately, go ahead and make Microsoft fall below $300 even. That's actually going to be a pretty big psychological level. So definitely eye up $300 for them. And then with the last one, Tom, we have good old AMD to the downside. Yeah, good old AMD. I'll tell you what, this stock has been amazing for day trades lately. Go ahead and make AMD fall below, I would actually make them fall below 124 tomorrow. I know that in after hours or right before market close, they got to 124.50, but I would honestly make them fall below 124. They're starting to sell off in a pretty big way, down 5%, and they moved very well off their levels this morning. All right, so we're watching AMD and Microsoft for potential day trades to the downside tomorrow, only if they break below the levels Tom listed. And we are watching Teladoc for a potential day trade to the upside tomorrow, only if it breaks above the levels Tom listed. But Tom, do you have any last minute thoughts or anything that's on your radar heading into tomorrow? Yeah, with the S&P 500 down so much, I just wanted to kind of bring this to everybody's attention because it kind of seems like lately that the market will fly down and then somehow recover right back up the very next day. And, you know, I'd love to see that happen this time, Mike, but I'm just, I'm really curious to see how we end up playing tomorrow. You know, we might wake up and the market's gap down a little bit, or we might start to run down at market open or something like that. So I'm definitely a little bit worried with the way the inflation data was perceived today. It was not good. And then I'm also going to be eyeing up the VIX with everything going on. You know, the VXX is up 9.35%. If we see the SPY start to break some major supports like 466 and then four, um, four, I mean 444 down there at the low and then 446, um, then I would go ahead and maybe buy up the VXX. It might be a pretty good day trade tomorrow if we see the SPY start to sell off. True that. So for those of you who don't know, when the market tanks down, normally VXX rockets to the upside. Like the market was down less than 2% today, but the VXX is up over 9%. Now, keep in mind, you don't want to hold VXX over the long term because it decays. 
but it's still good for like short-term hedging. So definitely keep VXX on your radar, like Tom mentioned. And again, if you guys are new here, please consider subscribing and let us know what you guys think about the market in the comments down below. And if you want to support the channel, please consider demolishing that like button and maybe leaving a comment down below. We greatly appreciate it. And besides that, thank you guys so much for watching.